Hello, welcome to the Maya Tour Belt. This is Michael. Today we're going to introduce a concept before we go into the details because it's going to be a bit of a, a series of videos, I think, that is going to cover the topic. So I wanted to kind of give a little bit of an overview first. So we're going to talk about rigid bodies. There are two types of rigid bodies in Maya. There's passive rigid bodies and active rigid bodies. You can find this under the dynamics menu set. Then you have soft slash rigid bodies here. And we can create an active rigid body or create a passive rigid body by right here. If you go into the attributes of create active rigid body, you see all these settings. The only difference between this these settings for an active rigid body and for creating passive rigid body, if I look here, is this little checkbox for active. Turning this on makes it an active rigid body. Unchecking this makes it a passive rigid body. So they use the same uh, settings, the same options, but the only difference between the two is whether or not active is checked or not. And what an active rigid body is, is an object that reacts to dynamics, such as gravity fields or constraints and so on, and it reacts to all of those effects. While a passive rigid body is an object that does not react to all of those dynamic fields and effects, but it can be collided with. For example, let's create a sphere. We're going to create polygon primitive sphere. So I'm going to make this object an active rigid body. So I'm going to select the sphere, go to soft rigid bodies, create active rigid body, and in the options I'm just going to go to edit reset settings. So we have all of our default settings and in our next video, I'm going to start going into all of these different settings because there's a lot of them. But I kind of want to, again, like I said, introduce the concept first. So with the sphere selected, I'll say apply. And we can close this. And over here on the channel box, you'll see that under the shapes and inputs and so on, we have rigid solver and time that have been added to the sphere. And they have lots of settings here, friction and bounciness and velocity and other such things that we will talk about in a the more in-depth video that goes over this topic but for now we've made this sphere an active rigid body so let me go to display UI elements and break this UI elements window off and turn on the time slider and range slider because to have these active elements actually do anything you have to play an animation and so I'm, these are my animation playback controls I'm going to set my playback speed to play every frame and the reason why is because of dynamics takes a bit of a toll on your computer usually and depending on how good your computer is having it play in real time might mean that it kind of skips now I do know that in the most recent versions of Maya this is improved I don't have the most recent version so my playback speed quality is not quite as good as the most recent version so I'm going to say play every frame, so that means the animation might play a little slower, but it will calculate all the dynamics more accurately. And then I'll say our playback start and end. I'll make this have like 500 frames. Hit enter and save. So now we have a lot more frames to work with. So I've made this sphere an active rigid body. So when I hit play, nothing happens. Because an active rigid body, what happens with an active rigid body is that it gets affected by fields and other such dynamic forces. If you click over here, you'll find the, a link to the video I've already made going over gravity and gravity fields. So let's go ahead and apply a gravity to this ball. So I'm going to select the sphere, go to fields, gravity, and then the gravity options. I'm going to edit reset settings, make sure it's all default settings, and hit create. So now I have a gravity field applied to this ball. When I now play the animation, the ball falls quite quickly. So I'm going to select the ball and move it up here. Hit play. Still falls. So this is an active rigid body, means it's being affected by the gravity. But in addition to that, it is making it a rigid body, means that it will also collide with other rigid bodies. So with this sphere selected, I'm going to raise it up. And again, I can hit play. You can see that it has gravity making it fall. Let's create a 
another object. We'll go to polygon primitives and create a cube. So I'll just kind of drag this cube out like this and make a table for the ball to collide with. Now just by making this geometry and placing it under the ball and pressing play, you see it has no effect. However, if I select the table and go to soft rigid bodies, create passive rigid body, if I go into the options here, hit edit reset settings, you'll see that the only difference will be that active is not checked, making this rigid body a passive rigid body, and hit create. So you'll see that over here in the channel box that this table object has now had the rigid solver and rigid body time, these things added to the geometry's attributes. So now when I hit play, the ball hits the table and stops. And I can take the table and say rotate it this way and the ball will react the way you would expect and roll off. So I did not have to do anything with the cube other than make it a passive rigid body for the active rigid bodies to collide with it. So that's kind of a brief overview of how these rigid bodies react with each other and how they are created. And they're pretty easy to make. You just select the object and pretty much hit apply. But of course we like to go over all of these uh, options that we have to get all the different settings in your brain. And just in case you have certain effects you want to see like bounciness, like maybe to make this ball bounce higher when it hits the table for instance. We can all adjust this stuff within Maya's options. So let's say bounciness right now is 0.6. Let's make it 5. Bounciness of 5. There it is. Makes it go crazy. Boing. So, yeah, you can definitely adjust these settings and get some interesting results for sure. Some fun results. And we also have, which we'll go over again in future videos as we talk about these subjects, our dynamic constraints such as a nail constraint or a hinge constraint and so on like with the sphere selected if I choose create a nail constraint and I'm just going to go in here and reset the settings make sure we have default values and hit create you'll see now I have this object that's connected to my sphere imagine a nail with a piece of string attached to the nail and on one end and the object that we've attached it to on the other end and this ball has gravity applied so if you imagine this nail stuck into an invisible surface here with the string attached to the ball hit play it swings like you'd expect using a nail constraint and this is all because we're we've made this sphere an active rigid body because gravity is affecting it it's reacting in a pendulum type manner like you may expect so you can have a lot of fun with dynamics and the active rigid bodies. If we were to take our passive rigid body and position it in this way, so it's an obvious collision, hit play. Oh, because of our bounciness, it's going to go crazy. <laughs> Let's uh, change our bounciness back to its correct value of 0.6. There we go. So it's a bit more natural looking. So yeah, this has been a brief overview of active and passive rigid bodies and a little bit of a preview going over nail constraints, which we're, again we're going to have a video going over relatively soon. And I hope you enjoyed this introduction to these concepts. We're going to be go diving deeper into these options and constraints and so on uh, in videos to come. Hope you enjoyed it. Please uh, like and comment, subscribe. I definitely love to hear your feedback. Uh, if you have any suggestions or requests for future video topics, let me know. I, I definitely put priority on your requests. So if you request something like, if you don't want to know about this stuff right now, and you say, hey, I really want to know about creating NURBS or something. Uh, you guys are my viewers, and I want to respect what you guys are really wanting to watch. So again, thanks again for watching, and I really appreciate it. I will talk to you later.